continuing on here, I'd like to check my head penetration. And I reverse the uh, M300 meter that's got the uh, markings on it. Put my little gauge on the head. And put it on the playback head and then elevate it to its position. Now we go zoom in a little bit. Those three marks there are uh, the high and the low and the desired position is in the center. I'm going to elevate the head up now and take a reading on it. All these dimensions I got online. Okay, there's my playhead position. It's actually just a little bit past the uh, middle line there. It looks a little higher, but it's just a shadow. It's actually very close to that middle line, right? just right above it. I'll take it over and put it on the record head. Now that's a little bit below it. And it's actually, um, I think it might be a bit too much. Those lines are half a millimeter apart. A millimeter is around 40,000, say 39 something. So those marks are about 20 thousandths. Uh, between them and that's where that's where it gets adjusted right there so look again yeah and it <clears throat> I, i'm thinking it looks like it's a little bit a little bit lower than the playback head it's in spec but I just want to have another I want to have another look at this. I've got a brand new head for this machine right from the factory that's never been installed. So let's take a look at that and see. Cuz I think those heads are supposed to be a little closer to uh uh in the same plane. That's a brand new head. It's never been installed. And I'm just going by eyeball here. I'm, I'm gauging the... Gauging how uh, parallel it is to the assembly. And it looks pretty parallel. So I'm going to go back and see if there's a way that I can adjust that up. It's, it's not a, it's not an adjustment that is given. It's just kind of something you have to figure out. Okay. Let's look at this here. And, and yeah, and that's, uh, that's visual. I can see that those heads are, are not in the same plane. So I want to make a little correction on that. Might be a little bit exaggerated on the camera because the camera's not on center and you're probably reading some converging lines there. But I can see it from where I'm looking. So I'm going to take a an old dental pick, a broken one, and just regrind a little bit and just put a little bit of a wedge on it. And I think what I can do is get it on that record head mount bracket or the mounting flange and between that and the bracket and just pry it up there a little bit. This is on a spring so that they're adjustable independently. I guess that's called discrete. And that's what I'm doing. I'm just trying to raise that up and get it parallel with the 
the playback head. And that gap right there, it was much bigger on top there when I started. I think I've got it up there about as far as I can get it. So now let's take a look at this. And again, remember you're reading converging lines here from the camera. But it actually looks it actually looks pretty good from my standpoint. I'll put the gauge back on it here and see. I'm, I'm trying to show it to the camera, but it's it's really difficult. So from that angle, it looks it looks a little more parallel if I kind of gauge it towards the bottom of that cage. But let's do it against the gauge. That's the real test. Sorry about the focus there. I don't know why that changed. The way I'm reading that is basically on the playback head, it's right at the top of the line, and on the record head, it's right at the bottom of the line. So... I'm talking four to five thousandths, maybe difference, and I'm good with that. There you go. Maybe a little bit better focus there. It's very close. It's well within spec. I'm just trying to, uh, I'm just trying to tweak it a little bit better. I'm going with it. It's just one of the little uh, spring gauges that can be used to check the uh, pinch roller pressure against the capstan. These these work fine. You just have to make a little different hook or modify a little hook for them. Uh, I use a force gauge like this. And this one reads in uh, tenths of a pound. And the uh, specifications in the manual are in ounces and grams. And so I just have to do a little converting. Whereas that other spring gauge is directly reading. So what I'm looking for is between 0.77 and 1.1 pounds on this particular gauge. And that is, that's stopped at about one pound right there. So that's where I'm looking. Now move it up here so that I can get everything in the frame. So I've got the uh, head block in its position, the cap stand up against the pinch roller in the correct position. And the manual calls for pulling off one to two millimeters, I think it was what it says. And so I'm just trying to raise it off of the cap stand a little bit and then measure the uh, force that it takes to do that. And the reflections are bad there, but it's a little pit past that 1.1 pound. It's about 1.2, maybe 1.25 pounds. So that's a little heavy. I'll double check that.
Yep, and that's that's a little heavy there. So let's uh, let's make some adjustments on it. The the manual actually calls for that spot to be used. Uh, I'm just checking to see if there's any difference, and there's not. I'm getting exactly the same reading. All right, so let's pull off the pinch roller assembly, and uh, just tweak that spring a little bit. I should have released that. I don't know why I didn't. I grab the nearest thing I can find here, which is a screwdriver. And I bend the spring a little bit. And, of course, that's not the right way to do it. You should find something that fits in that barrel correctly. And so I put this back, and it made absolutely no difference at all. Because all I did was bend the wire a little bit. So... So there I am. Absolutely no difference. So let's get the right tool here. And I find a gauge pin I happen to have. And I think it's a 3.97 millimeter. I can't remember exactly, but it's a very odd number. And uh, yes, I had that in my, in my tool box. But that fits that perfectly, and, and then that way you can adjust around the, the correct diameter. Put it back in, check it again. And I went a little bit too far. That's under 0 0.7. Let's do it again. I'm trying to get this around 0 0.9 pounds. Now that's a little bit over one pound. It's it's in spec, but it's... Oh no, that's still too light. I'm sorry, that one was still too light. I had to go a little heavier. Now this time I went a little bit too much again. That's that was I think one point zero five pounds. That was within spec, but I like it down in that point nine range. If I need to make modifications to it later, I can. But I kind of want to get it in the middle of the the tolerance. There we go, right there. That's going to be right about point nine something pounds now yeah, let's just take a picture of it here and put the picture on it there we go that's about 0.92 pounds and I'm happy with that Okay, well that's all set. I'll put
put our e clip back on there. All right, well, let's put this thing back together and get it back in the deck. Check it out. Put the control board back on. I know that that and the three wire on the left go through the side and connect to my pitch control board. And I just broke that little black wire off of the, uh, off of that little uh, tape sensor micro switch which is good it's good that it happens now see that on this deck a lot of my uh, a lot of my wires were in bad shape the, the solder joints had uh, deteriorated not really the solder just the, the wires just fatigued and broke and so we're hanging on by one or two threads and of course after this one I took a loop and I looked at the rest of them and they were okay all the ones that I've wiggled have broken off and I've repaired them and so that's okay it's good that it happens now so I'm just adding a little bit of deoxid uh, contact enhancer I think it's called s100 to all of the uh, connectors the connector pins there I see that I know that's got to deal with that all right so let's take care of it and desolder that one those two go together right on that terminal suck the solder out of it Same as always, clip them back a little bit, strip them. Twist them, clean them. I've had problems before with tinning them, so I put a little bit of uh, flux on them. Tin them up, bend them over a little bit, and hook them in there. And this happens a lot on these decks. I don't even give it a second thought because they do, they're thin wires and they do, they do break off. Right, let's plug everything back in. I've got this one last red connector put together. And let's put some screws in it. 
I'm just trying to make sure I don't pinch any wires. Nothing gets in the wrong position. Um, make sure it's all loose. I'm not going to uh, tighten the PCB down on uh, any wire and pinch it in there and possibly break the PCB. Okay, I'm just putting these loose, getting them in place and putting them loose. This whole assembly is like a unibody. It all holds itself together, and I want everything to be happy in its, in its happy place. And so I now I'm making sure they're loose, and I'm going back and tightening the two on the left-hand side there where there's that little heat sink. And I want to tighten those down with the PCB in its down position. In other words, I don't want to tighten these down and then go back and tighten the other screws down. I want to have just a little normal amount of force on everything so that I don't put any stress on those joints. There. Now we can torque it all down. And right before I put it back in, I want to service this pitch control board and potentiometer. These are a, another known problem. Um, the, the potentiometers they put in here were not very good quality, and they fail. Uh, they either have or they will fail at some point. And I want to replace that and clean that uh, switch, which can also get dirty and sometimes cause actual uh, speed problems on the deck. Get it apart, get the right screwdriver. And that whole PCB comes out just like that. to desolder those four terminals on the potentiometer. Now this is the replacement here. It's a different configuration. It takes a little modification to make all this work. Uh, but this is a much higher quality component. And if the pitch control is something that's needed on this, this needs to be done. I just do it routinely. I do use the pitch control a lot of times when uh, archiving other people's old tapes and things. And so. I'm, I'm looking at this. I'm trying to see if I can maybe do it differently than I have in the past. I'm trying to see if possibly I can get that to wrap around that board and solder it from the back and I'm thinking about it, I'm looking at it, but it's not going to work. Uh, in the end I decide to just do it the way I always have, but I thought it might be possible. You can see that the uh, the post is much smaller on this one. It's a smaller component and it requires some modification and I'll show that in a second. Alright, let's get that one off of there. A little bit of flux and then some new solder because that's old solder and just a handheld solder sucker. Get it off. I'll give it a quick cleaning. Screw 
scrub that old solder off, clean it up, some alcohol. And that's ready to be resoldered. Well, maybe I'll have one more look here. It might just be possible. <laughs> but <laughs> I keep thinking about it, but it's it, it's... It's not going to work. I've done this many times before, and I don't know why I had it in my head that I can change it, change the I, the thing that works. But So I bend those terminals back, and then what I have to do is narrow them down. And I do that simply with a, a Dremel tool like that, and then go back and just file them down with a die maker's file. And just get them to the right, you know, get deburr them and so forth. And this works very well. I clean them up. And I just put that little notepad under there as a shim. <clears throat> and I'm just going to uh, just tack one on there, make sure it's in the right position. The it, it actually has to be in the right position to fit in the bracket correctly. And so a little bit of extra uh, eyeballing on this really helps. All right, there we go. I like that. Let's clip the leads off. Now, this requires some additional circuitry modification to make this work. Um, I didn't design this. This was conceived by Sam Palermo of uh, Skywave Tape Deck Repair. And I'm not going to uh, show the circuits because I haven't asked his permission to show them. And so this is my solution here. This is how I do it. Um, that's an extension that I made out of 2024 aluminum. It's been alodyned and it will get uh, a drop of cyano on there after everything's all put together to make that extended out. These parts aren't available, haven't been for quite some time. And this is a workaround in order to make this pitch control work. And it works quite well. And uh, thanks to Sam for uh, putting this out there. I just don't know that he wants me to publicize it. I'll even put a link to his website. All right, I want to clean this switch. Uh, these switches are also not available. I've had them apart had to repair them and I I would rather just service them now and not have to deal with that again they're very very delicate the contacts and and uh, yeah they're just very very hard to deal with this is my little uh, deoxit case that I keep handy and uh, I've already cleaned this now and it, this is functioning I had I don't have any problems with this I just want to service it and I'm going to put a little bit of the gold protector in it. And so I'm just going to put a drop right there and then just blow it in with some compressed air and make sure it gets all through there. And then I'll do another one. And that that should last for a long time. Those can actually cause problems if uh, if they're not working correctly. All right, I'm going to clean that. And then this is the contact enhancer. I think it's uh, S100. Is that what they call it? Uh, S100L. Uh-huh. 
There's no cleaner in that. It just enhances the contacts. And I put that on all my connectors when I take something apart like this. All right, let's get that transport back into the deck. And again, I'm putting, there's six screws here. I'm putting all of them in loosely. And then I'll just wiggle things around, get it in its happy place where it wants to be. This stuff actually makes a difference. And then I'll torque them down. Now I'm going to tie these wires up, tidy everything up here. I'll actually be taking these back out later because I didn't do the uh, real motor tires, idler tires. <clears throat> and I didn't do those because I wanted to do that separately to show that the transport doesn't need to be removed to be able to do those. And I sell those tires on eBay and Reverb, and I get a lot of questions about how hard they are to uh, to change and I'm just going to make a separate video or probably maybe on the end of this one or somehow showing how easy they really are to change and that all you have to do is take the uh, top off the deck you don't have to remove the transport they can be serviced right here that's fairly similar to how the factory had the the wires tied up I haven't tied up the uh, uh, head lead wires and I probably won't I may just leave those loosely in there I've done them different ways all right I just gave one more cleaning on the head and the capstan give it a quick demagnetize or degauss I'm just kind of running all through there and getting most of the metal parts. Retract it slowly. Before I run my alignment test cassettes through there. All right, so let's just give it a quick go over, make sure that all the controls are functioning correctly and that it's not going to eat any of my <laughs> alignment tapes. And it's not a very good camera angle, but you can see the control motor pulley uh, doing its job and the deck's functioning correctly. You can, you can feel it and you can hear it. So now what I really want to do is test my wow and flutter or flutter on the deck and see how well I did so far. Uh, I'm putting in here my very old RCA 3000 Hertz uh, test cassette. It's for wow and flutter and um, speed. And I just want to check the wow and flutter right now. So I've got it started. It's been running about 10 minutes. And I've already got it set up to test the flutter. It takes a few seconds for it to process. Any time now. There we go. And that is excellent and about what I expected. These decks are manufactured to a very high standard, but also to a tolerance. And all the manufacturer needs to do is meet that tolerance and then kick it out and go to the next deck. And that leaves room for those of us that have the desire to uh, dial them in a little finer. And so uh, I'm pleased with this so far. And we'll move on to the next one. And I hope you'll join me for that.